In other words, you can think of something like religion, um, use of the slang, um, almost any behavior or belief that we can put in here that people espouse. If we have a million of us who are pretending to, to believe in something, but none of us really believe in it, then if we really, then, then we're not really to get together. We're together in our, in our inauthenticity. We're together in being fake, but we're not really together in anything real. So that means that the whole foundation of our, of our, of our unity is fakeness. And that's a really bad place for us to be, because if you know that you're being fake, then of course there's a danger that you might feel like you're not really part of a group because you don't realize everybody else is being fake. You know? It's kind of like if you walk around and you say hello to people and you're like, how are you today? And everyone's like, oh man, I'm doing great. And no one's really doing great. And so, you, but everyone says that they're doing great. And so what do you say? Oh yeah, I'm great too. And you don't realize that none of us are doing great, but we're all together in our pretending to be doing great. But you feel like, God, everybody else is. How come I'm not? What's wrong with me? Why am I not doing, why am I not feeling the same thing that other people are feeling? This is one of those things that when I was asking the question about why today, why today, as opposed to the past, there is something that does exacerbate those, those problems. Like, for example, social media. And, and, and I, don't like, you, I don't like saying stuff like that because then it becomes like this catch-all that ends up meaning really nothing. Like if I ask uh, the question of like, what's changed in the world, people will say, you know, the way things are today, like, why today? Why is it just today? Like, human nature hasn't changed. We've been around for hundreds of thousands of years as what we presently are. Um, what, how is it that all of a sudden something has changed? We'll say, oh, well, technology. And then we'll all nod our heads and go, yeah, well, you know, technology. We've always had technology. Technology is any kind of an advancement, like the printing press was technology, uh, antibiotics is technology, the car is technology, um, the bow and arrow is technology. These are all, all of these things are technology. So I guess the question becomes which technology? And then what we mean to say is just kind of like social media. But it's interesting how we use that term social media as a catch all for all technology, as though that's the one that really matters. Maybe in this context, in a sense, it might, perhaps, because what social media does is it presents our best foot. Um, any of you guys, when you're having a lousy day and you're going through some horrible stuff, you post the worst moments of your life online? No. Yeah. You ever post positive things online? No. Yeah. Is anything positive online? Just... <laughs> what is that? Uh, something positive? Like, like you're having like fun with your friends, you're on a roller coaster, and you, people post you know stories about stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, so I, I don't understand this. So if you don't post the worst parts of your life, if you don't post the happy parts of your life, well, what the hell are you posting? Myself. Myself. It's a real question. What are you then posting if not the best or worst parts of your life? I post art. Art. Yeah. Why art? Why art? I don't know. Why not? Because it's meaningless. Yeah, basically. So then why post it? <laughs> you asked me why not, I gave you a reason. Because it's fun. Because it's fun, okay. So you're having to, so you're, so you're posting something that, you're posting something that brings you some level of joy. Yeah. Okay. And of course if I see that, and I don't have anything that's bringing me joy, what I start to think, hey, everybody's got joy in their life except for me, and so maybe I'll, I'll post something that looks like it's joyful, just to kind of participate in that. But the idea is that all of these things will, uh, um, social media, when we're posting these, these happy, these joyful, these things that bring us joy, or the happy parts of our lives, or your friends will post that they're at a party that you're not at, and it gives us this sense of like everybody else is having fun, everybody else is doing these things except for me. I'm the only one who, who seems to be not in you know, the, the fun times, the happy times. And so that means that there must be something wrong with me, and it exacerbates this. Of course, the problem is that, so maybe you will, you will end up posting something positive. The thing is that so many people are going through this. I don't say everybody's going through this, because not everybody is going through this. But lots of people are going through this, and we're all kind of going through this together, but we're together in, in, some, in some inauthentic expression. Whatever it is, you know, we've mentioned slang, we've mentioned religion, but we can also be together in this sense of just, I don't know, we'll just say fun stuff. In other words, people posting the fun things that they're doing, you know? Like a theater. 
maybe <clears throat> it's interesting to me. Like, I'll talk with people, and they'll post these things about you know family, man, family. You gotta love your family. You gotta love your, you know. And then and I'll talk with them in person, and then they'll tell me about how much they can't stand their family. <laughs> okay, well, why are you posting all this great stuff about your family? And they're like, well, I mean, it was a fun time, but. Now, seeing that, if I didn't talk with them in person, I would think, wow, this person absolutely loves their, 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 their family. Um, there's one person I'm thinking of specifically. Um, she pops in my head because she posted something again this morning. Um, she, uh, her mom passed away uh, about a year and a half ago. And um, I talked with her, and she's completely falling apart constantly, constantly because of it. She hadn't dealt with this yet. And yet, when she posts things about it, she's always posting these happy times, doing all this good stuff. And yet, she tells me privately, I, I struggle deeply with even getting out of bed most mornings. And you would never know it from what she was posting, because what she's posting is stuff like this. You'd think her life was completely well-adjusted, and she was dealing with these things. But I wonder how many people like this are on your timeline. And I wonder how many of you are, are this thing right here that we're kind of like pretending that we're something, just so we can feel like we're part of it, or better yet, it isn't even so much that we're part of it, so that we don't have to feel so goddamn alone in everything. Everybody else is going to think, like, how come I'm not? What's wrong with me? Why am I the one who's not? And it's only because of this inauthenticity that we think that that's the case. So everybody else is maybe you know, posting stuff that we think is, that they, that they see as fun times, or art, or whatever. And even if you're posting art, Wow, that's neat that they can do that. I wish I had a talent like that. And yet, meanwhile, maybe the person who's posting their art is posting it because they wish they had a talent like somebody else had. But to reveal these things about yourself makes you incredibly vulnerable. Sorry. To post these things about yourself makes you incredibly human because this is what it is to be human. To be human is to become aware of your frailties and your vulnerabilities and yet to, to, to face them and overcome them anyway. So that last part, facing them and overcoming them, this is not so much human as it is part of the journey of a hero, somebody who can overcome, somebody who can strive and become something greater than, than what they presently are. Because everybody shares this in common. If I ask you what it is to be human, you might just say, well, it's, it's DNA. I guess so, but DNA all has something in common. It all degenerates over time, which means that what really makes us, the, the one thing that we seem to share besides our DNA is our mortality. The fact that we're all going to die. The fact that we're all going to die is an indicator of how frail we are and how vulnerable we are. And if you look at it in the grand scheme of history and of the universe, that of course can make us begin to feel very small, very insignificant. And so joining together in these things here become become very, very important for us, because these are the things that make us feel less afraid and less alone, because by ourselves, we're an individual, and we're not really too meaningful, but as part of a religion, or as part of a group that uses a certain slang, or as part of a contributor to a, to a group chat where you're posting fun stuff, now we've joined with others, and so our meaning now, or at least our importance in some way, has now elevated, and we're not just us, we're joined with others. And so for a lot of the people, the, the price of that, of course, is inauthenticity, which means that you can join a group, but now you're going to become alienated from yourself because you're not being able to deal with who you really are. But, of course, the trade-off for that is if you do deal with who you really are, you have to accept these things here, the frailties, the vulnerabilities, the humanity, the things that make you what you are. It's a hard fight, man. It is. in some way. So if I ask the question about what your what, what principles are, you know, we again we I don't know how many of us actually have principles. And I, and I, and I don't mean this in some insulting way. I hope I hope you can take this in the best possible way. I wonder how many of us who have a, a religion actually have a religion. Or if the religion has us, or better yet the culture has us pointing towards that. I wonder how many of us really believe these things because I imagine if we believed these things, we would behave accordingly. Like we all believe in, in gravity, I imagine, and so we live accordingly. We don't jump off of the top of 10th floor buildings and, and fly around. 
because we know that there's a consequence for it. We all believe in physics to a certain degree, which is why we don't run out into traffic between cars, because we know there's consequences for that. If we have a real belief, then that means that we adopt the consequences. So I wonder how many of us really believe this, and how, how terrible it makes a lot of people feel when they espouse it, and then they don't live according to it. Because you're forced to kind of now have to confront that. And then, of course, all the defensive mechanisms that, that, that start to play out in your life so that you can still espouse it, but not live by it. You know, slang is a bit different. Like, I wonder how many of us adopt slang. We don't really know what the hell it means. We just kind of know how it functions in a conversation. Think about any other principles that we have, whether they're political, whether they're social. I mean, hell, even um, something cultural, like, like I said earlier, when people talk about family, they're like, you know, family is like everything. But is it, though? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. That's up to you to figure out. It's easy, though, to espouse it. It's difficult to live up to it. It's easy to espouse a religion or, or a cultural identity, but it's very difficult to live up to it. Now, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't. Notice what Adler's saying here is it's not a chastity. He's not wagging his finger at us, saying, stop being hypocrites. It's not that at all. Maybe that's not bad advice, but that's not what he's saying. He's just pointing it out. It's easier to fight for principles than to live up to them. You should follow my religion. Why? Fill in the blank. Do you follow your religion? We're not talking about me right now. We're talking about you. Um... You should all follow my, my cultural standards. Why? Do you follow them? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. You follow? It's easy for us to tell other people how they should live. It's very difficult to tell ourselves how to live. Very, it's very difficult to, to follow through on it. You know? Oscar Wilde once said that the only thing to do with good advice is to give it to other people. Because it's never a value to ourselves. It's never a value to ourselves. This is why when you come in, I, I'm never going to have to tell you what to do. You already know what to do. Should you drink more water? Yeah. Should you eat more vegetables? Yeah, unless you're keto, I suppose so. Yeah. Should you study more? Should you be kinder to people? Should you be more responsible? In fact, should you adopt more responsibility? Because that's one of the things that this basically is. If you're following a religion, understand what you're doing. You're adopting a responsibility. You're taking something very heavy onto yourself. Because your religion gives you precepts. It tells you what you're, what you're supposed to do and tells you what you're not supposed to do. Change the way that we think about it. It's not about allowed. You're not allowed to do this. You're allowed to do almost anything. You're going to pay a consequence for it, but we pay a price for everything that we do and what we don't do. When you adopt a religion, you're taking something very heavy onto yourself. A very heavy burden. I must follow these precepts, I must follow these things through. Why? Because it's something I truly believe. It's a principle I live by. Same with something political. You're taking something very heavy onto yourself. But that's, of course, what gives us meaning. You can't join in any kind of a group in any way without taking on some level of responsibility. And so what I might encourage you to do, maybe, is to take on as much responsibility as you possibly can. Because perhaps that's the thing that can give your life meaning. If you're that person who's stumbling around trying to find meaning and you're just not finding it and posting fun stuff, perhaps. There's something wrong with the things that we're pursuing. Maybe a responsibility is something that we can try to take on. Not because you have to. Not because you're not allowed to do something else. But because you're willing to do it. You take it on willingly. Not because you're forced to. But because you want to add something to your life that's meaningful, perhaps. Or, we can espouse those things and insist that other people fulfill those responsibilities that we say that we believe in. Questions? Comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Thursday? Yeah. <laughs>